How Lovers 2 has taken the internet by storm. This comical yet unbelievably savage game. Man, I'll live. I'll live. Hopefully. What is Has people calling it the AAA game killer. But why is that? Just like you, I wanted to see if this game actually lived up to the hype or if people were just hopping on the bandwagon. So I bought it without watching any gameplay videos and not having the slightest clue of what the game actually was. I wanted to try and get the full experience and let me tell you what, this game was not what I was expecting. This video will go over everything I've experienced so far and the things I've learned about the game along the way. I'll go over the pros and cons so that you can see what it's really like and decide for yourself if you want to get it or not. While doing this, I'll also give you some tips and tricks along the way to make your gameplay more enjoyable. First. Let's talk about the solo queue experience. This game is not for the faint hearted. I mean, I died in the fucking tutorial. Fucking GG! Oh shit. When that happened, I knew I was in for something wild. When you first start the game, it can be pretty confusing. And if you play on keyboard and mouse, you need to fix your keybinds immediately. All for dive? What even is that? Anyways, I dropped straight into my first mission and had no fucking idea what I was doing. It was dark, I was lost, and I was getting my cheeks clapped by a bunch of little bugs that seemed to spawn from nowhere. However, I somehow managed to finish the mission and got back to the ship. When I was there, I decided to look around a bit, but couldn't seem to figure much out, so I jumped right back into a new mission, and instead of fighting bugs, I was up against the Terminator from hell. I'll be back. And well, I died. A lot. And after failing the mission, I realized I was only playing on easy mode. What the fuck was that? No way this game is actually that hard, right? Well, I continued to play and die. Running around trying to call in Grand Theft Auto cheat codes while being hunted down by an endless army of cold-blooded robocuts and getting destroyed over and over again. But that wasn't going to stop me because I was determined to beat a level on medium solo. I quickly realized that the automatons or the robots were a lot harder than the terminates, simply because they can fucking shoot you back. Playing this game solo can be frustrating, especially when you don't know anything about the game. However, with that being said, it was still an absolute blast, even if I was getting obliterated. After an hour or two of getting tossed around more than Pamela Anderson in her prime, a couple of my buddies jumped online and gave me the rundown of how the game actually works. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> I found out you can buy weapons along with armor that have special upgrades to help aid your battle for democracy just by leveling up and playing the game. You can also buy new stratagems which makes the game a lot easier but even with the upgrades it's still hard. Everything in the game can be purchased without having to pay a cent out of your wallet. That's right, you don't have to pay for the battle pass, all you have to do is play the game. Which seems wild nowadays, and is something that every game should be doing, but instead, we get overpriced skins and terrible updates. <laughs> Valorant, God. After getting all this information, I quickly upgraded my loadout, which helped me out a lot. As before, I was running the default class and getting destroyed. But once I got some half decent gear, it was game on. We then proceeded to run some joint missions, which let me tell you, made this game so much more fun. Oh, this is the real gun time. Oh, fuck me. Oh, wrong gun, wrong gun. It almost reminds me of the good old days when my buddy would come over, he'd bring his console and a monitor, we'd get some slushies and run COD zombies all night. I honestly haven't had this much fun playing a game in a while. Once I dropped in with the boys, they started to teach me everything I needed to know. First, every time you drop into a mission, you will have a main objective that you need to complete before the time runs out. On top of this, there are also side objectives to complete and samples to be collected. Depending on the mission you choose, the time limit and side objectives will be different. There are shorter missions that usually can consist of fighting off waves to extract civilians or killing as many enemies as you can to thin out their numbers. The longer missions are locate and extract base which will have tons of side quests to do and each one you complete will give you more XP and points towards unlocking more upgrades for your character. However on every mission you need to be looking for samples. These can be found scattered around the map in random areas either on the ground or in crashed ships and hidden bunkers. The samples are used to help upgrade your stratagems allowing you to become stronger and fight even harder harder for democracy. So make sure that on every mission you go, you're looking out for the samples. You can also find super credits in these areas, which are used to buy even better armor that change over time. Keep in mind, if you want, you can always use real money to purchase these super credits as well. However, you don't have to. Also, when doing the longer missions, you want to look for the survey beacons. If you activate them, the map will light up with spots where you can find samples along with hidden missions that need to be completed. I would suggest that you always do your best to complete as much as possible whenever you drop in 
important because don't forget you are a hell diver and your job is to fight for democracy. Every time you complete a mission, you are essentially helping the entirety of the hell divers community battle one big war, and whatever you complete goes towards the total percentage of each planet liberated, making this a worldwide effort between you and everyone else playing the game. Not only that, but the enemy can overrun certain places in real time and things get extremely hectic. That's when all hell divers get called in to liberate a certain area, and it's a race against the clock. Very cool concept that makes this game even more unique, in my opinion. And on the topic of online efforts to spread democracy if you get online none of your friends are playing and every time you solo queue you get absolutely cooked well that's where queuing with randoms comes in. Now in most online games, playing with random people can be a pain in the ass to say the least. However, in my experience so far, that is not the case with Helldivers 2. In fact, it's an absolute blast. There are two ways you can do this. You can either join in with a group that you find on the world map, and if your party is set to open, random people can join your ship as well when you queue for a mission. The second way is by calling for help mid-mission when you were struggling because you decided to solo queue and thought you were him, but quickly realized you most definitely are not. I played with randoms quite a bit and for the most part everyone is chill and just trying to help Super Earth fight for freedom. I haven't had a toxic group yet which is surprising since literally everything will kill you. I mean everything. So the fact that I haven't been team killed on purpose every time I drop in with randoms is quite surprising. In fact the opposite has happened where a homie ended up dying right before extract and everyone without saying a word waited for him to be able to deploy back so that he would get XP as well. This type of sportsmanship would never be found in other games. Needless to say, the random squad experience has been great so far, aside from sometimes having people who don't use their mics, but regardless, when that happened, we still ended up clapping cheeks in the name of democracy. And now, let's talk about the cons of the game. So far, I haven't run into that many. However, there have been some glitches here and there. This one time, I was trying to help civilians escape, but instead of running to safety, the idiots ran and huddled right outside of the safe house, just sitting there waiting to get violated by the hundreds of robots I was violently fighting off. So I did what every true democracy serving freedom fighter would do, I executed them. Other than that, my experience has been great. And if you're looking for a game that will have you on the edge of your seat, trying your hardest to survive when it feels like all odds are stacked against you, one that allows you to troll your friends in any way imaginable, and is simple in theory yet never seems to get boring, then I would highly suggest you give Helldivers 2 a try. As someone who strictly plays competitive shooters, I haven't had this much fun playing a game in a very long time. The community is amazing, something that I am not used to, mainly because I am so used to playing against 9 random strangers online instead of coming together as a unit and fighting to save super earth in the name of democracy the gameplay feels fresh and exciting with so many different things to do and a difficulty level that makes it frustrating yet enjoyable i'm not 100 percent sure how to explain it but i can tell you this if you've been playing games recently and are getting bored just going through the motions queuing for no reason hoping to have some fun hull divers 2 will fix your problem at least it has for me just keep in mind when you get it that it is not easy and you will go through mixed emotions of anger, happiness, frustration, and uncontrollable laugh, which is what makes this game so much fun. So get ready, Helldiver, and come join us in the fight for democracy.